Hi everyone, Brad Drew here. You know, for the last year, I've been working with uh, creating infrared images uh, using my iPhone. Uh, I know many of you have um, participated in a couple of the webinars that I've done on it, and I know we have a we have a group of almost 600 people on Facebook now who are uh, who are exploring this uh, this process as well uh, using um, a few accessories, an infrared filter, and then specific processing uh, shooting and processing techniques to um, elicit uh, an infrared image uh, from the phone. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about today in this short video, um, there are lots of ways to process these raw files. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a, a raw file created using the native camera on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And um, it appears magenta because it comes out of the camera in that way uh, with the infrared filter. Um, what I've done is move this file to my desktop and I've opened it in Luminar 4. And I want to show you, even though there are ways to process these files on the iPhone, and they're, and they're very good, and, they, and the images do turn out uh, well, sometimes we have an image that might benefit from the more powerful desktop tools for processing. So what I'm gonna show you is a simple workflow that I do. Um, I use Luminar 4 because it allows me to use plugins such as Denoise AI and Sharpen AI from Topaz and also Nix Silver FX Pro 2. Um, but there, you could use other editors as well um, to, to do this. But basically what I've done is pull up this image. Um, you notice it's a, a DNG file or a raw file from the iPhone, and I've pulled it up into um, Luminar 4. And the very first thing I'm going to do over here, we have our, uh, our editing tools, and I'm going to go down and convert this image to a black and white image. So now we've illuminated that uh, magenta tone, and we're looking at a, at a black and white. And before I do anything else, before I do my raw processing or anything, I'm going to come up here to my edit menu and access my plugins. And there are three that I'm, or two actually, that I'm gonna start with. I'm going to start by running Topaz Denoise AI. I'll go ahead and click on that and it, it's going to open Denoise AI. And <clears throat> here's our image. And if you have the latest version of AI, you notice you don't even have to click run. It just, uh, it does it on its own. Um, I'm going to enlarge this to about 200% here so we can see what's going on. And, um, let it run again. Notice the blue line down here. So there it is. It's run. We have over on the left is before and on the right is after. So let's look at this. There's before. Look at the tree up here with the bark on the tree right here. There's before and there's after. The amount of clarity that it's brought into the image by just eliminating some of that noise and, and a little bit of um, sharpness enhancement. That's a tremendous improvement on this image and I'm going to <clears throat> accept it, click apply and it's gonna round trip me right back into Luminar 4. And once I'm back here, uh, there's our, our change now. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go and invoke Sharpen AI. Now this image is pretty sharp but it's going to make it a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to show you here and then these are the two steps I start with. And I do these things before I start a whole lot of editing because I, I want to eliminate the noise and I want to have the image sharp before I start um, doing other editing. I don't want to enhance the noise in any way with editing. So again, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to change this to 200 percent. I'm just going to click over here and make sure go with the auto. It's telling me to go with the too soft model. And then I'll go ahead and click on auto here and it's going to remove some blur and suppress some noise. So there we go, there's our before and after. And again, if I slide to the right, you can see that's before and that's after. Now it's a very subtle difference here, but I definitely see it on my screen. And it's, um, it's giving us a really good starting place now for finishing the editing on this image. So I'll go ahead and click apply. And again, it's going to round trip me right back into Luminar 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now that I'm back in Luminar 4, I can continue with my routine processing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to the light adjust adjustment, go to advanced settings, and I'm looking at my histogram down here, and I notice that my, my blacks are really, really crushed over here on the left, and I've got some room to uh, lighten the image. So I'm going to start by lifting my blacks here with this slider, and I may bring it all the way up to the maximum there. Um, and then with whites, 
I'm going to watch that histogram and I'm going to pull that slider over until I just start to clip on this side. Now I'm really watching this, this area right in here. And I just want to make sure I don't, <clears throat> I don't blow anything out. I want to maintain the detail in these highlight areas. That looks pretty good. I may go up now and, um, oh, I may, may drop those highlights just a tiny bit for this area. And I may give it a little smart contrast. And it gives just a touch. And I might, that's too much, obviously, um, just increase the exposure by maybe a degree or two. That's probably too much. Uh, again, I don't want to lose this area right here. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm going to go with that. And so I'll close that up. Next, I'm going to go to a tool here in Luminar 4 that I really like called AI Enhance. And watch how this slider affects this image in so many different ways with contrast. So as I bring it up, notice how our blacks are getting richer. I mean, if I go all the way up, um, I think that's a little overbaked, but I'm gonna back it off maybe to about right there. And I really like, there's, um, there's without it and there's with it. I really like what it's done in terms of bringing clarity to the image and especially lifting some of the shadows <clears throat> down here in the bottom. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and by the way, we can mask in any one of these things if we want to. I'm not going to go there today with this because it's really not a Luminar 4 exercise, but you can mask to emphasize specific uh, uh, targeted areas. Um, next, I'll go to structure and I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit. I wanna look at the, the structure up here in these leaves and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit. And as I do, I, I'm adding a little bit of um, sort of clarity to that image. Um, and again, I could if I wanted to mask, but I'm not going to. And that's all I'm going to do at that point. The next thing I'm gonna do is go back over to my edit tool and I'm gonna grab the silver. Did I run Studio 2? Sure. Yeah, I did, okay. Then I'm gonna run Silver FX Pro. Now this is a NIC software uh, tool that's been around for ages um, and it just gets better and better. And I love it that I can plug it in right in here to Luminar. This is the interface. For, um, for the NIC Silver FX Pro, you notice over here on the left, you have all of these different presets. Each one can be selected and then you can go to the right panel and make minor adjustments or tweaks uh, to the image to get it the way you want it. I'm gonna scroll down here. You can, you can test any of these just by clicking on them. There's one down here that I really appreciate. Uh, if I can find it here, um, where are you? It's the fine art. And by the way, you can have, you can select these, uh, here it is. Uh, fine art high key. Here we go, fine art, that's the one I want right there. So um, again, if I wanted to, I think that looks beautiful. I don't know that I need to do anything to it, but if I wanted to, I could go over here. Maybe I could drop those highlights a little bit for this area, just drop that down. See how I just notched, took it down a notch. Um, I could also um, bring my midtones up a little bit. That's kind of nice. But again, you see how you've got all these different things you can tweak. Again, not a not a Nick software uh, tutorial here, but I wanted you to see how you can do those things. So once you're happy with that, I'm going to click OK, and it's going to round trip me right back into Luminar 4. So here we are. And now we have that, um, that last adjustment of Nick. So now, um, and this is where it gets a little funky for me, but I still enjoy using Topaz Studio. And um, it's the earlier version of Topaz Studio 2 um, that, that has replaced Studio, um, and it still runs and I still like it because of some of the things you can do. So what I'm going to do at this point, um, I'm going to once again, go out to my, um, plugins, and this time I'm gonna to get Topaz Studio right here. And what I like about Topaz Studio, unlike Studio 2, Studio has an image layer that allows me to add my watermark or my, my uh, business signature to my images very easily. Um, so here's our image uh, in Studio. I'm going to go up here and uh, open this. Uh, I have a PNG file of my signature and I'll open that up. And there it is. Before I do that, though, I want to go over here and do a 
radiance adjustment. So I've talked about this in the past. A lot of the original film infrared from the day, uh, back in the day, it often had a, a soft glow to it that was sort of part of what happens when you process a film infrared image. And it was a very characteristic look, and I think beautiful look, kind of ethereal. Well, you can replicate that with this tool in studio called Radiance. This is also in studio too. Um, but again, all I'm gonna do is come down here and click in this cell right here. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys and increase that value. And I'm gonna take it up to about three. And I don't know if you can see that real well, but um, it's just giving everything a little bit of a soft glow. So if I turn this off, there's without, and there's with. I just think it's beautiful. I like it. I'm going to keep it. So that the next thing I'm going to do is grab my image layer and drop it over here in the panel. And this is my signature, my, uh, my watermark. And I can edit that. Um, I'm just going to grab the, <clears throat> excuse me, grab the corner here size that down to where I want it, position it where I want it, and get it down there in the lower corner, and tedious there. Okay, something like that. I'm gonna get down just a little bit. So now I have my watermark in there. Um, and I'm ready to go back into Luminar 4. So down here at the bottom, there's a little OK Save uh, Disk icon here. I'm going to tap on that, and it's going to save it back into Luminar 4. Um, and there is our image. It's got now that soft glow, and it's got my signature on it. At that point, I'm going to go ahead and export this back to the location where I want it to be in the learning set. Okay, and so this is um, uh, and so that's just my little shorthand for how I save things. There we go, and now it's out in my camera roll. Um, and let's just go take a look at it for the heck of it. Um, it's. I think it's just a really beautiful image. Um, I mean, the, the combination of Nick and then the Sharpen AI, um, I think does a remarkable job um, on cleaning these up and um, making them look really, really good. Um, sorry, where's the latest one? Day modified, that's it right there. So there is our image, bring it up. Um, and it's just, I think that's a really nice job. Again, this was taken with an iPhone. It, it's, <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine, but um, anyway, it's, this has been a really fun alternative to, I love shooting with my big uh, Fuji IR camera, but um, the iPhone having the ability to just uh, kind of quickly um, pop on a, a filter and take an image and then process it to look like this is really, really fun. So anyway, that's it. I just wanted to share that with you today. I wanna to thank you for, uh, for watching and um, hope to see you uh, online or in the field for too long. Until then, keep on creating. Hi everyone, Rad Drew again. One last thing before I let you go, I just want you to be aware that um, on August 5th, I did a webinar, a 90 minute webinar on how to create infrared images with the iPhone and some Androids. So I wanted you to know about it. I've recorded that webinar and it is now available for purchase. Uh, it's the same content that we went over in the webinar and two additional handouts of information. So some of the things that we'll talk about in this, um, in this session, this is a little website that I have set up for it. Um, I'll put the link to this in my LinkedIn link, which will be in the uh, profile uh, for this video. So you can find it and link to it. And these are just a few of the images. Um, things we'll look at, we'll talk about the accessories that you need to make infrared images with the phone. Um, you'll need a case and a filter mount and a filter and some things like that. And I'll provide all uh, information on how to access all of that. Um, we'll look at three different um, cameras and camera apps and methods for creating an infrared image in raw format. So to do this with the iPhone, um, there are several cameras that we've identified as um, 
being the best for, uh, for getting a good result. So we go over those. I'll also take a look at four different tools for processing raw files. Three of those will be um, um, existing apps or tools that are built into the phone. And then I'm also going to take you out um, and run through my uh, desktop processing, which is basically what I just went through uh, in this little clip that, that we've just looked at. Um, so those are some of the things that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cover. If it's something that you're interested in, you can come down here to the, uh, the buy, buy Now button and, um, and request that I send you that material. So um, it's a great way to get a jump start on how to do this. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, and also I encourage you, if you haven't already, to join our, um, our Facebook group out. It's called Open Group Infrared on the iPhone. And we have about 600 people there now um, who are posting regularly and sharing information about how they do what they're doing with it. And, you know, we're all kind of pioneers in this. So uh, it's a great place to be inspired and to learn a little bit more about, um, about how to make infrared images with your, excuse me, with your phone. So thank you again. Um, and I hope to see you uh, before long. Take care. <laughs>